Okay, so here's a new project, kayak project. I'm going to set up an electric bilge pump in Judy's kayak. Uh, I just wanted to show you some of the parts that have come in and uh, a few of the little things I've done. So I had to have, I ordered some 13, or I'm sorry, 14.8 volt batteries, lithium ion, uh, 3400 milliamp hours on those. I got a rule, non-automatic, so it doesn't have a uh, float built into it, 500 gallon per hour bilge pump. I got some 16 gauge, two, two uh, wire marine wire. I got a 5 amp waterproof fuse and line fuse holder. And then I'm going to use these little tracks which is a company that makes parts for remote control cars and basically they're just gonna they'll have brass connector plates on them but this will connect the battery to everything else and then there's a Y one that'll connect that to the main circuit and then I got this which is a reed switch so it's a magnetically operated switch you probably won't be able to see it in there but there's two little fine pieces of metal that have a little air gap in them and when you cross the magnet over it it trips the circuit and starts it now some of these bilge pump setups I've seen they've used a smaller lighter weight switch this is actually like rated at 6 amps and they've used like a, a contact for say like a security system door or whatever and then use their relay to actually trip the main current circuit for the pump but I'm going to try doing it this way without it so when you're all done you end up with something that looks like this so I've wired that switch into or soldered it in the line and then I'm going to build a little mold and I'm going to mold this whole piece into some uh, epoxy and then I'll put that under the deck and then you'll be able to take a magnet, not this magnet, but I'll make one for the boat and I'll show you when I get to it. And when you slide it by, you can hear that motor start. So that it'll be completely waterproof and you'll be able to turn the switch on. The switch will be under the deck, but you'll be able to turn it on from above the deck. All right, so I'll keep you informed as I go, as I get more parts and I got some more pieces yet coming, hose, fittings for the deck itself, fittings to put the wire through the uh, bulkhead going into the back, a little uh, uh, piano case box, like a, a Pelican waterproof box to put the battery assembly in, and uh, a couple other things if I remember correctly. But as I get it further down the road, I'll show you some more pictures. Now, I'll tell you one thing just from, it's not cheap. Average person is never going to want to do this. I have reasons for wanting to do it, so to me it's worth the money. Part of the problem is I'm only doing one, and like, forget the wire, you know. 25 feet is about the least you can buy when only I'm going to probably end up needing about six or seven. And uh, there's just a few things that you have to buy almost bulk. And some of the parts, because they're marine application parts, it's uh, more expensive. You know, you're paying for waterproof and things like that. You don't want water to be able to get into the back of the boat, into the hull. And so you got to spend a little bit of money. But as I go, I'll uh, show you what it does. And uh, I'll put a whole uh, part sheet together where I got everything. All right, thanks. Okay. Work progresses slowly but surely or steadily on this uh, electric build pump for Judy's kayak. So let me show you what I'm building here. So I have that a reed switch wired up there and I'm going to use this stuff right here Art Glow Epoxy Resin and it's for casting. I could just use regular epoxy resin but this is really meant to be poured for casting and I'm going to cast that whole thing in a solid block of epoxy resin and then I'll shape it up a little bit so it fits under the underneath of the deck nice and uh, tight and then I have to try to figure out what to use to glue it to that plastic with 
I'm probably going to rough it up first and try a little bit of uh, silicone and we'll see if that works. So just some other things. that it, So the batteries, this is what I'm going to use for the battery box. It's really a little bigger than I want, but I had one that fit real good and these are the uh, piano or whatever boxes and what's bad about them is they have this little cut right here in the top where the latch clips into it and the original box I had worked perfect but that little bit right there was just enough to keep the, from closing so I had to go to the next size bigger box but that'll leave me room for uh, these waterproof so you have a fitting in there and you run your wire through it and you clamp it down and then you Epoxy, or not epoxy, but a little bit of silicone and screw this in and I'll drill a hole here down in the end So it'll actually be two here one for the line coming from the switch and one from the uh, Battery or from the pump and actually this one has one hole in it But the ones for there'll be one in the bulkhead and one in this box for this the pump actually has two holes in it and the mount came for the pump so this will get screwed right to the bulkhead this pill bottle uh, I saw in one form where somebody had taken one of these and cut it down put some big magnets in there and then drilled a hole through it put a piece of brass rod through it and then used that to slide for their switch on the uh, on a bungee line so we're getting ready luckily I do enough glass work on some of the boats I have that I have most everything I need just laying around the garage so one thing I'll recommend if you're ever playing with it, when you get if you get some little stirs like this, they work great. But if you take your scissors and you cut them all square, then you can get down in the corner and it works a little better. Pour everything slow and stir slow. Try not to drag bubbles into it. I mean, it's really not going to matter. I'm not doing this for, like, looks. But I can sometimes be anal that way. All right. When I go to pour this, and when I try to get everything mixed up, oh, some uh, actually these are measuring cups. So, and what you want to make sure you're doing is use one for each. It just works a little better, I find, and they're cheap if you're buying them. I mean, they're not like a penny. Uh, so, one for the resin, one for the hardener, and then a couple mixing cups. Stir it up, pour it in this mold I made. Now, if I was really worried about how it looked when it was done, I would have used something on this as a release agent, but seeing as I'm not I'm not really worried I can take a little bit of sandpaper and sand out any wood or anything I'm gonna mold it and make it up clean it up anyhow so basically just some uh, like one by material I drill the hole in this one end here fed the wire through I have this little piece of string right here that's actually suspending this end up and keeping some gap underneath of it and that way when I pour it will go underneath as it sets up a little bit I'll pull that string out and I have this washer and I'm going to set this washer right here right on top of it so when you slide the magnet over it will try to find this washer because this will not give it like a direction where to stop so hopefully that will give it a point to stop and hold the magnet there. Alright, thanks. Okay, so I've been mixing this up got some bubbles in there I'm not really too worried about it what I want to do is I'm going to pour this first bit up to about the top of everything and see if I can let it sit for a little bit and then drop that weight that uh, washer in there sorry for all the noise I'm out in the garage the AC's running storms are coming in it's that time of the year all right let's see what we can do here we're just going to pour some of this right in there And I use the volume calculator actually to figure out how many ounces it will take to fill this. So we'll see if that was even close. You can see all the nice bubbles. If we we're actually pouring this out, we could probably use a little bit of heat on it. And uh, that would help get rid of those bubbles if we we're really worried about it. It looks like I'm just going to have enough to finish it. 
All right, so I'm gonna let that sit for just stiffen up a little bit, and then I'll pull the string out. Now that it's under there, I just didn't want it to get pushed right down. And then I'll try to very carefully lower this in there because I want there's a. Let's see if we can see this. Here's one of the. Uh, let's see if we can get this camera to zoom up here. That's hard to see, and it won't. It doesn't want to. Let's back out of it and see if I can get this in. Yeah, it won't do it. But anyhow, this is the reed switch, and so you, right here in the middle is where the separation is, and I want to try to center that washer hole right over it, and then that'll line up the magnet. This isn't the magnet, but that's something else I still have to build yet. I did buy one, but I don't like it. It doesn't seem to have enough strength to it. All right, so when I drop that in there, I'll come on back. Okay. Just to give you an idea of what I did, I set that washer in and I just ran one little piece of string, actually thread underneath it just to keep it going this way. The tube itself on the reed switch will keep it balanced that way. I just didn't want it tipping over and falling in either way. And when I put the straight edge across here, I can see that I'm pretty, pretty darn parallel with that washer down there and everything will be covered. And that'll give me some room. Oh, my timer that I had set, 15 minutes. And that'll give me some room if I need to sand this down either way, just to get a little bit nicer fit under the deck. And once again, this is, it may not work when I'm done. I'm hoping it does. And that's why I bought two of these. And if this doesn't work, then I'll go to something else. I'll go to the other method. I'll go to a lighter weight switch with a uh, relay in it. it for the higher current part and I have enough room in the box that I bought if I have to do that we can make that happen very easily there's plenty of room in there for the two batteries all the wiring in and then a relay if I want to put one in it I really was hoping for a smaller box but part of the, the issue became is a lot of people are only running one battery and I'm going to run these two in parallel so that'll give me twice the working time of it. I could have just ran one and made it and carried one and swapped them out, but this way here they're together. I'm thinking by the time I throw some foam in here, pack these in here, get all my wires all in here. My uh, these are called cable glands, by the way. Get these all set up in here. That it'll take up all that space and it's not going to be that bulky. I mean, it's not going to take like that's how much room it's going to take out of the boat. I can live with that any day. Not a big deal to me. And this is a fairly decent watertight case. Uh, but it's going to be in a watertight hull, so it's not like this is ever going to be forever underwater. It should almost never be underwater. Okay. Okay, so there it is. Those air bubbles will do nothing. I'm not worried about that. I wanted to I could probably pop this one really big one. And one thing when you're working with fiberglass resin and stuff is once you get it in there, you want to cover it with some plastic. And that'll let it dry and it'll be it won't be tacky if you don't put plastic over it. you can end up with like a tacky surface. It will go away, but this will just make everything work a little quicker. All right, so 24 hours, let that dry. I'll break it out of the mold. We'll see what we end up with, clean it up a little bit. One more thing down. All right. Okay, so it's set up enough so I could do a little test. So. I have this uh, ohm meter hooked up to that switch and we've set this on there let's see boom the switch is closed so I feel that once I get this sanded down we should be really good to go all right we'll get to that point pretty soon okay 
So working a little bit on here's the kayak that that pump is going to go in and uh, I broke it out of the mold. I will make one point if you're going to try to do that. Uh, you definitely want to put some kind of release agent in the mold. Uh, you'd have to investigate that a little. You may be able to get if it's wood like using a, a little bit of uh, some kind of uh, wood oil or something just so it doesn't stick as good because it basically epoxied itself right to the wood. I should have thought about that better but you learn. So I've mounted the switch. Let's see if we can see it. It's right up there underneath that clamp. You see it right there and there's the wire coming out. I just have it clamped in. I'm just testing it to make sure the theory is all working right. There's where the pump's going to go. It's not screwed in. It's just sat there. And then the wires will come all the way up here to the top of the bulkhead and I'll drill through up here. And just to give you an idea. So there's an old meter right there. What I'll do is on this here. So what I'm thinking about doing is taking maybe this container here, cutting it down, drilling a hole in here put a piece of uh, brass tube inside diameter the same as this and I've ordered uh, some uh, one inch by a little over an eighth inch rare earth magnets and I was going to probably stack three of them in here and that probably more than this magnet has so when we slide this up we'll see oh. Yep, you got to get it right on where it's because it's got to be underneath there. And so the, it's easily working right through the material, the hull, and the switch pack. And I did take a little bit of time and I made that switch. You know, I played with it, sanded it here. So I did take a little bit of time and molded that so it fit tight up there. So that'll be a nice little epoxy, or not epoxy, but silicone joint. And I'll take and I'll rough up the plastic on the bottom side and silicone that switch right in there. And then I'm going to mount the battery box back in here. And I'm going to leave enough cord so that basically I'll Velcro it up to that bulkhead right there. And I'll be able to take the Velcro loose and pull it over to here in the hole in this opening and get the battery out. So I don't have to try to fuss around plugging things in way back there and stuff. And then just Velcro it all up. Alright, that's about where I'm at. But yeah, if you're going to do the mold deal, you need to make sure you have some kind of release agent. Uh, that's about it. I'll keep you informed. I'll show you the next steps as I go. Okay, so the project continues. I'm making the little magnetic block that'll sit above the switch and actually turn the pump on. So what I did was I took a pill container, cut it down, and then I put a piece of brass tubing through it. And now I have a rare earth, two rare earth magnets suspended in there on a piece of thread kind of see what I did yeah I know it's way overboard and crazy but we'll see if it works uh, I'll tell you this has been a lot more work than I thought it was going to be and it's some more parts I got a piece of vinyl tubing the uh, outlet came in and then what I did was I got a cork and I'll put a piece of string through the drill hole put a string through it tie it off so you can cork that off while you're running because there is no uh, backflow preventer on that pump. So this way water can't come in if the boat flips over or whatever. Stuff to mount the pump in the hull. This is some um, super heavy duty uh, Velcro. But the thing about it is instead of having a cloth, it's all plastic. And I'm gonna use that to mount the battery box up to the bulkhead. And so now what I got to do is I'll mix up some epoxy resin and we'll pour it in there and I'll pour it probably right up to the top of the magnet and then I'll make sure it's centered better. It's a little off center there. 
And I also had to put it in at a slight angle because, of course, when drilling that, I got that tube in there at a little bit of an angle. And I've coated the inside of this with uh, uh, Vaseline, Vaseline to uh, make it so I can take this plastic off. And then I'll just sand this whole thing down and clean it up and level it off and make it all molded out nice. Maybe it'll look good. It may not work at all. And I'll just throw it away and start over because, of course, one of the problems we have here is every time you buy something like the magnets, I need two of them for there, but I have to buy ten. You know, the problem with doing this project here is, is that you end up with a lot of extra leftover because you're only doing one. If you're making kits or if you could buy a kit, it would be much easier and cheaper. And then, of course, you're waiting for parts to come in. And I'll go over one the connector for the con to connect the batteries to the pump. It's coming from China. They sent it twice and it's been lost in the mail twice. And I went with a connector that somebody else had recommended on one of their builds, which is a good one. It's these Trax plugs I showed you them before. They got a good contact surface. But if I would have thought about it a little bit more before I did it, I would have just looked online and bought some uh, high current RC car or RC plane battery connectors which I could have got cheaper faster and here already so I'll kind of make a list and go over all this at the end a little like just what happened and where I got it all right one more piece going together okay so it's poured it's hard to see it looks pretty centered in there. And if we look at the side, we can see the magnet suspended. Everything's a little crooked. And it's kind of like running down to the right side a little bit. But what I'll do is when I sand this all, I'll, I'll sand that straight and parallel to the uh, brass pipe. That way it'll run parallel. The, the uh, rear bungee strap will run right through that piece of brass and I'll clean that all up real nice and smooth and with any luck I coated the whole inside of that bottle the pill bottle with uh, Vaseline petroleum jelly so I'm hoping I can peel that off eventually and just have the clear and I'll be able you're gonna be able to see I don't know if we can see it but the little strings that are holding those magnets up there's just no way to pull it out it was already a pain to keep the magnets centered. They wanted to swing to one side and I had to put a couple toothpicks down between the magnet and the outside or the inside of the pill bottle and sit here and wait and wait until it was just set up enough that I could pull that out and it would stay in place. And actually I had a whole little jug mixed up of uh, resin and it took so long it hardened and I had to mix up another. Luckily I bought like enough to do seven of them so we're good and like I said I don't think I could get that into much smaller and if I did it was gonna cost me much less all right moving right along okay so the uh, got the little I don't know what we're gonna call it the little magnet that will actually activate the switch out I took it out, you know, I coated the inside of that pill bottle with uh, some petroleum jelly Vaseline and it actually worked really well as a release agent. And so you can see there's the brass pipe in there and the two uh, rare earth magnets. Pretty decent centering. I polished it all up. I polished this surface here that'll ride against the boat so we shouldn't get any wear. Of course, if something gets in between there, it can scratch it, but... And I was going to actually take the top of this and round this up a little bit more and make it a little bit, but after I looked at it, I really like it being a little square and a little bigger, and that way, if you have gloves on or whatever, you can grab it. And just happened to hear the switch, and it's casting. So that's facing. This is actually the bottom. This side will be top glue to the bottom of the hull or the underside of the deck and there's the little magnet or the little washer I put in there and what I think that's going to do is that'll help this magnet sit on that and find that one spot right there 
Okay. So now it's just mounting this to the boat. I've got the core or the uh, bungee released already. I'm gonna see if I can get it all together. All right. So as progress goes. Needs to say, this is over weeks now, and the biggest issue isn't actually doing the work, it's getting all the stuff. So, just to give you a quick idea, I've got the foam insert now inside of the case for the battery, just so they don't rattle around. But, I ordered, and this is only a small piece because I threw the other piece away, a small little kit. It had this and then this piece of foam here too. But the problem was, this is what they call pluck foam which probably wouldn't be a problem, but some of it was kind of dried out and it was basically, so you just pull these pieces apart and make a hole however big you want, but it was falling apart, so it was pointless. And it came with this that I may one day find a use for, but it didn't work, but it was only $3.50. So then I ordered a bigger block of a more dense foam. This is more like you would find in some of the gun cases or a, a GoPro case that has all the cutouts already when you buy it and you can see it's kind of hard but there's actually three layers that are glued together from the factory and this was 12 by 12 basically this much was cut off of the whole block and this actually worked perfect so what I did was and I don't have it out I cut those slots in there and then trimmed this to fit and what I used to cut the slots where I used uh, an X-Acto knife basically to do starting the cuts and then a bread knife to kind of cut down in there but to get these real tight edges cut I ended up having to take a hacksaw blade and grinding and grinding the edge around here to make it sharp so that I could actually just poke it in and then cut out the space. So it was a pain in the butt, but it did work. So also would have showed up, what I've been waiting for is this parallel connector. So the two batteries connect here, and then they connect to your pump and switch and everything on this end. So since they're in parallel, the battery voltage does not increase, but the amount of time it's like running a double like double sizing the battery so instead of running 30 minutes it'll run an hour or 45 minutes and here's the batteries again I don't know if you can get that in the actual data and then there's the little clips and then what I did was these were individual wires so I put some and I'm going to heat shrink this down I didn't want to completely cover it because then it'll make it harder to bend the wires and if you notice, I've numbered the packs so that when you're recharging, you know what's going on. And then basically, the longer pack slides in like this, and then this one slides here, and boom, that'll hold them in there, and then this will shield shut. And you can see they don't fall out. And then this will get connected, boom, to there. And if you notice, these connectors here, when you're, if you're doing anything like this, are bare. These are concealed. You always want to make sure the batteries are concealed so that nothing can dead short that. Then, once I get this figured out, I mean, once I get my holes drilled and all my other wires in here, I'll cut this to length, and this will get soldered to another one of these, and that'll start to run. It'll come out of the battery on the positive size into the fuse, then into the switch, and then return to the ground. And well, I'm waiting on two more parts, and it's two of these basically, they're called cable glands, and basically so this will seal against the bulkhead, or here, I'll drill a hole in this box and this will seal here, then the wire goes through here, there's a gasket in there, it sinks down, and it's all waterproof. But I have two on order that have two holes instead of one hole so that the two wires from the pump can go through there. And if I could have found it, but I, I didn't really look that hard, I might have been able to get like a uh, piece of shrink wrap 
that would go over this end and cover the whole thing, shrink wrap it, and then you would only need one of these with one hole in it. But of course, these have turned into a major headache because there's a gazillion on eBay and Amazon. You can get these for like 10 of them for 10 bucks. But if you start reading the reviews, it's they're like saying, good thing they send you 10 because they break so easy. These are reinforced nylon. These are really nice ones. These are commercial grade, not cheap knockoffs. So we're moving along on this. Here's the battery charger. And then I took one of those ends and soldered it right on here. So you do have to be plug the battery in before you plug the charger in because these are bare here. But I've plugged it in and charged both batteries up. It actually has a red light to tell you it's charging and green when it's done and it all worked appropriately. Here's the discharge tube and here's a one inch hole saw that I'll cut the top of the deck with and then that'll slide right through the hole. I had to buy 10 of these stoppers because that was the smallest I got. Could find a number quantity and then what I did was I picked the one that was this size hole here closest to the top not way down at the bottom that way when you push it in a vast majority of it goes in and then I'll tie this end off to the bungee line or something and then that way you can plug that hole close and if the, when this comes off it's not like you're gonna lose it and that's pretty much everything right now I've got oh let's clean this up I can't remember if I put it on another film but I cleaned that up Got that ready to go in, and then let's walk over here real quick. Let's take a look at one last thing. It's a little dark over here, but here's the little magnetic switch running through the bungee. So you got two magnets down in there. And then this will slide. Actually, it'll go on this side of the boat. Now, I was, and what the ones that I've seen online have all mounted it up here to this deck line. Or not deck line, but bungee line. But the problem becomes is Judy's been wanting a deck bag, and I just got her this deck bag. And needs to say it comes all the way up to there. So you're kind of screwed. That doesn't work. Plus, if you did have to do a rescue, help somebody pull their boat up on the deck here to drain it off, drain off the other boat, I wouldn't want that up here. This is one of the negative points on this boat. This thing is like, that's how much of my hand can fit in there. It's that small. So the idea is good, but the size is just too small. I mean, it goes forward way far forward but it's like if you squeeze something in there how do you get it out it should have been it would have, the problem is is it kind of gets smaller going forward instead of keeping the overall size so we're just gonna not use it put cover over it throw a big nice stuck bag on here and bam and to me it would have been nicer if they would have not put that in there at all and I could have mounted an under deck bag that was bigger and more convenient. And then you don't have this bag up here because now this kind of gets in your way. Also, if you wanted to do a rescue, basically you're pulling the boat up on top of here. It can be done. All right, I have two more pieces and I'm actually gonna start installing some of this today, I think. Scuff this up, get this ready, get the switch mounted, see, make sure that all the silicone, because I've never silicone to this plastic before, and I just want to make sure it's going to all work. The uh, battery box has actually got some super double, that really good uh, plastic uh, Velcro. I don't know if you'd even call it Velcro wet plastic, but basically and it's already taped so we'll see if that holds it seems to hold through the plastic battery box pretty darn well all right all right so i got the boat just sitting here on the stands upside down let me show you real quick okay so i mounted the pump well now of course we're sitting in it upside down here's the outlet for the pump itself 
and over here silicone to the deck and it's or to the underside of the deck and it seemed to work really really well is the switch and you see i've already bulkheaded that switch through that i mean, ran that uh, switch through the bulkhead and if we're really quiet i don't know if this will come up but you can hear that little tapping noise maybe and that's the switch being triggered and there's the motion that's where it's triggered at so from back here and what we'll do is actually when we're not using it we're going to keep it over there on that side of the deck and then all she has to do is run it to here set it there and it'll be off bring it in to right to that point and i can hear it click on and now what i'm doing is i have some of these little black wire ties and let's see if we can show that you yeah, it's hard to see but you can run a wire tie through that and i'm going to just silicone these on right here one here and one down there just to hold these wires up against the bulkhead and then i'll lay in my uh drain or my line out which i've already actually heated up and molded it a bit so it can make this bend a little without kinking and i'm going to need one more back here and once I get, I'll set that in there and I'll take a look at where I want to put it and I'll just put one more tie here to hold this so it stays out of the way. I am going to give up some room behind the seat, but it should be minimal and you should still be able to use it and also things won't be in where you can snag them. So we'll be looking through the back hatch. Let's see what it looks like. If you can see anything up there are the three screws that are holding the, uh, pump bracket and I just basically have siliconed I silicone the holes closed. Once I get all done I'll fill I'll set it on the ground. Never fill your boat while it's on stands. Always put it on the ground. I'll fill it up and make sure there's no leaks and seal whatever I can. And then down there is where the uh switch wire is coming through and right next to it on the camera left I'll drill another hole once I get that component and bring the pump wires through and then I'll have that same setup in the box where the batteries are. Alright, we're moving along. Okay, so I had mentioned that I molded this vinyl tube, but it still wasn't quite where I wanted it because I wanted it tighter up to the wall so I can strap it back there to help eliminate vibrations and one less chance of it getting snagged. Uh, Unfortunately, really, I was trying to keep it as straight as possible. I could have gotten this with a 90 on it, but it would have made some really huge 90s elsewhere. And uh, so what I did was I took a heat gun and I heated it up to uh, about 600 degrees. I had the gun set at like 700. I didn't want to melt the tube. And then I just grabbed some stuff that I had laying around. And actually, this is my first aid kit for my uh, uh, PFD and I just have it like cushion against that tube as it cools off so it'll stay up closer to that bulkhead right there and I pretty much have it where there are no huge bends in it so I should get a maximum flow out of here all right just to give you an idea and Sometimes you have to use whatever you got in the garage to make this thing work. And you can see I have those now taped in place and siliconed in the wire from the pump. I just don't have the uh, cable gland for it to go through because it's a double hole one. Still waiting. That's going to hear saying that the manufacturer does not have them there. Uh, the only one they're out of on their parts list is this one that I need. And they're saying uh, another couple weeks before they'll get them in. Alright, so here's a little better look at how this came out. The hardest part about this whole job is when you start drilling holes into your boat. If this was mine, a fiberglass boat, I'd feel much better about it because I can fix that. Here, oh man, it'd be a tough one to fix. Just got to be careful and know what you're doing. Or maybe not even know what you're doing, but more so what you want to do. So you can see in here, so a little better picture there. That coming through up there. I want to keep those high. Then I'll mount the box probably over here on this side. And it, I'm going to keep the cables long enough so that 
I'll tie, I'll put like a cable tie on them so that I can pull the box right to this point to take the batteries out so it's not a headache. And also for all the final wiring because these will have this and the power for the pump will have to be run into the box and all tied together and soldered up. And I don't want to try to do it way up there. That'd be just crazy. I just put a cable wrap on this so I can roll this back up to two of them and just velcro that box up to that wall all right when I get to the box part I'll show you that I'm just trying to keep this somewhat up to date I mean this has been over a month now and it isn't doing the work I mean there's only like two days worth of work here at the most a day if you just dig down into it two days because you got to let some of these things like that silicone air dry and so forth but it's getting all these parts because at one time companies were making some of these kits now I don't really see any of them and so you're having to source all this out you're having to figure out what you want to use without even really seeing it or touching it and touching it is like that foam block if I could have held one and the other I would have known instantly which one to buy but it's getting there and I knew it was going to be somewhat of a headache and that's why I'm making this video in this thing pretty cool and you can see the thread in there I don't see it ever wicking water in there through that that stuff's all soaked with epoxy resin but you can see how it suspended those mag magnets up and how that brass tube and I just made sure that the ends were really really nice and this is highly polished down here so it slides you can see though what's happening is just some grit that was on the deck so that I'll have to be careful of that you get some grit and that's why I didn't want to put like foam or something under here this way it would wash out relatively easy not scratch the boat up too much and I'll polish that boat out and I'll polish that out and that'll help all right till the next one so these came in today with two hold cable glands so you can see there's a single and then right here will be one of the two holes the other one will be in the bulkhead so I'm going to drill the hole in this and I was kind of debating how to do that the first time and I actually had tried to clamp this which I couldn't get a good clamp on it where I would hold it at the top and I found that if I did it this way put it in there start her up and then hold it and drill it out I could control it and get it done take my time and do it I thought about clamping this in the box or in my vise and then just taking a drill but then I got this big chunk of paddle bit out here what I'm worried about is it kinking a little bit and snapping the whole case so if that happens right now I'll stop to fill and then I'll buy a new case and then refill this and you will not even know no I wouldn't do that if I cracked it I'd show you it and then I'd do all the other stuff so if you go real slow, and you can kind of look at it and make sure that you're going pretty straight. feels like this is running out of truth. Sometimes you get a little wobble. This is really antique, ancient freaking drill press that I bought used 20 years ago. So, I mean, what's old? Made in Taiwan. Quality. See how it looks like that. You can see it's already starting to drill through there fairly nice and with the blade it's cutting this outside edge first so it'll clean cut that this will still be a little thicker than where it breaks through first time you can see and now clean that hole up and we'll come in here where the 
lights a little better. So one thing different about, so this was from a different company than the first one. The first company didn't make a multiple hole one. And that's why I've been waiting. This one actually came with a nice little gas to where the other one was actually beveled down here around the thread so if you put an o-ring like I did on these it would hold it in place but these come with the gasket and the little lock bolt all right I'll put all this together drill the hole in the boat I'm not gonna film that it's just too hard to see and start putting this together this is the end of it now it's just a little bit of wiring and soldering all right Okay, the final piece finally showed up and I was able to wire this box in. So let's see if we can get an idea of what's going on. So right here, these two wires here, this brown and black, are from the pump. The black being the negative, the brown being the positive. Down in the very bottom there, you can see that waterproof fuse sitting down there. So we come out of the positive side, positive side of the battery, into the fuse, out of the fuse, into, oh, I'm sorry, these two wires down here, this yellow wire and this red wire from the switch. So, and it <clears throat> doesn't matter, there's no polarity to it. So, we go out of the fuse and into that yellow wire. So, we have the circuit going to the switch. Then it comes back on this red and goes to the ground in the pump, or goes to the positive in the pump. So, this is positive to the positive in the pump. And then this is the negative here coming back to the negative of the battery. And so I set this up. I got it on a bunch of stuff just so I could solder it together and take care of that because I just finishing that. But basically I have it so that I can pull the box up just enough and get the batteries out or set it down and not have to try to fuss with it way up on the bulkhead. So when we come up here and look, you can see... There's where it goes through the bulkhead right there, two waterproof fittings. My molded line. My cork. Boom, oh, so it's open. And then my switch. So I'm going to put it out in the yard and put some water in here and let's see how it pumps out. Okay, so there's what it looks like, Velcro to the wall, up there on the, the uh, bulkhead. And you can see the screws on the bottom, that's what's holding the pump in place. Two waterproof fittings, wire glands as they're probably called. What a pain in the butt. You can get these things, like 10 of them for 10 bucks on Amazon, but once you start reading the darn reviews, it's like, good thing they send you 10 because they seem to break pretty easy. So to get good ones, a nylon, reinforced nylon, it was a pain in the butt, but I'm only doing it once right now. So let's get some water and see what happens. Okay, I have the cockpit way full, way more water in here than if somebody was in the boat, they'd be taking up space and I'm just gonna run a timer on it. I'll start the timer once I start the pump. We'll get an idea how long, I won't hold it here the whole time. Alright, so I've seen some videos where the water like shoots way high and out and looks cool like a fountain, but I don't seem to have that effect, but it's definitely pumping some water out. I think some of the reason is, is because the hole is so big, if the tube was, if everything was constricted a little bit more, I'd probably get more distance out of it, but it works fine. And it's always going to leave some water in the boat, just like the hand pump, you can't get it all out, you end up having to sponge it. but more than enough to paddle and be safe until you can sponge it and what's nice about this is that if it was rough water you could uh, skirt up and be bracing while the boat's pumping itself out so it's not like you're trying to fight everything all at once
Okay, so you can see there's a little bit of water in here yet. Plus the boat's sitting here in the grass and it's kind of not, it would have a little bit more to the rear if it was in the water. Somebody's sitting in it. But I mean that's maybe, uh, you could get out a little bit more with a hand pump, but that's about it, very little more. So just under four, just under four minutes. It's not too bad. Pumped the whole boat down. It actually took longer to fill it up than it did to pump it out. So I think that's pretty good. All right.